Hey, what's going on everyone? Misha Wilson here and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's episode, I have something really special planned for you. A few weeks ago, we actually did a video on Facebook ads and I walked through the 30,000 foot view basics of Facebook ads, how to run Facebook ads, how to not get shut down running Facebook ads and how to be profitable running Facebook ads. And since going ahead and posting that video, I've had a ton of people ask me for more information and a more detailed comprehensive breakdown of how to run Facebook ads to create profits in their business. And so that's exactly what I'm going to give you here today in this training, but I'm even gonna kick it up one notch. All right, so instead of me just, you know, essentially sitting here and recording my Facebook power editor and walking through a bunch of PowerPoint slides, I'm actually going to give you free access to another event recording in which our speaker, an eight figure earner, someone who's done literally, you know, $30 million plus in sales, walks through exactly how he uses Facebook ads, starting with why Facebook ads, you know, getting to the right messaging with Facebook, all the way to how to use the Facebook AI, the artificial intelligence, to optimize your ads, to create maximum profitability, and ultimately scale your business. So I know you're absolutely going to love this if you wanna learn how to use Facebook ads to make more money with your business. As always, please let me know in the comments section below what your biggest takeaway is from this video. Video. And don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell icon notification button so that you get notified when we do more videos just like this. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Welcome to the Misha Wilson Show, where we show you how to create massive success online so you can enjoy the lifestyle of your wildest dreams. What's up? How's everybody doing today? I apologize. I owe you an apology. I did not announce the VIP. He said, yeah, you do. Somebody said, yeah, you do. You don't even know what I'm apologizing about. I scratched your car in the parking lot. <laughs> the VIP lunch completely went over the top of my head. So to make it up to you, I've talked uh, Misha into allowing the VIP lunch to happen both tomorrow and Sunday. I mean, I'm a hell of a guy, right? Actually, it was original, that was the original plan anyway. So hey, for those of you who are VIP, VIP lunch is gonna be in the same place tomorrow and then the same place Sunday. So congratulations to the VIPs, right? By the way, was lunch pretty good? Did you have a chance to have a conversation with somebody that maybe you hadn't met yet? Awesome, well done. Did you have a chance to speak with any of the speakers? Yeah. Great, if you did not, just realize that there will be more speakers coming through the entire weekend. They'll be having lunch with you in that room. And for those of you who aren't VIP, you might wanna think about that. How's that? Yeah. All right, listen, I'm really pumped about this. Are you guys pumped? Yeah. Are you pumped? Yeah. By the way, somebody came up to me and gave me a nice compliment on lunch. They're like, you are so enthusiastic. I'm like, of course I'm enthusiastic. Is there any reason not to be? Is there any reason not to be this three days super enthusiastic about this? No. Not hyped up, not pumped up. I'm talking about like really seriously like ingrained. You're saying, dude, this is awesome. Yeah? yeah. Okay, anybody not feel that way? Because I will come up there and m help you feel enthusiastic <laughs> in a good way. From a place of love and concern, of course. This is how much I love you guys. I'm gonna bring up somebody next who is an absolute legend, and frankly, he won't admit this, but he, he's, he's kind of a big deal. Uh, here in this industry and without, uh, outside the industry, uh, he started off, he graduated from MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, got his computer science degree, then went off to the University of Southern California, don't hold that against him, and got his electrical engineering degree. So a super smart guy, worked in aerospace for five years, so he is a certified rocket scientist. He's a pretty smart dude. But listen, how many folks have worked at a place for like you, where you invested a lot, maybe in your education or you're you know coming up in the in the industry and thought, man, I got to stay here because I put all this work into it, right? Anybody ever felt that? Well, Fernie definitely felt that after you know multiple degrees, five years in the aerospace industry, aerospace industry, realized, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore, and instead of staying stuck. He freaking did something about it. So he got involved in the online space uh, back in 2012. He's been working, actually he's, over the last 10 years, he's been doing the uh, online space, made over $20 million for himself personally, 
helped multiple six-figure and seven-figure earners launch their business, been a mentor to people just like Kate McShay, Misha Wilson, and a lot of other folks you've probably heard of and seen in the space kicking ass and taking names. This is the guy who's helped launch that business. In fact, I will tell you this, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Fernie Ceballos. I'm pretty excited to have him up here. I know you guys are gonna learn a lot. He's the uh, Chief Marketing Officer for Elite Marketing Pro, which is a uh, mentorship program. He's also the co-founder of the No Excuses Summit, and he's gonna come up here, he's gonna talk to you about how you are just one ad away from a six-figure business. Can you believe how close you are? Yeah. Is that pretty exciting? Is that pretty exciting? Hey, if you're not stoked and you're not psyched, you better be, because it's about to get real. I want you to get up on your feet, get loud, get proud for my man, my brother, Mr. Fernie Ceballos. <laughs> Good to be here. Awesome, guys. Ah, oh, hey, how's it going? I got, I got my little fan club of two right there. All right, how's it going? So I have the amazing job, incredible job of uh, keeping you guys awake as you battle food coma. And I'm like, really, Misha? Really? I'm gonna like about go into ad metrics, and they're just gonna go all, all pass out on me. Uh, but I'll tr I'll try not to do that. In fact, uh, I'd say being able to to master one skill set, which is the ability to write an ad that's effective and draws leads and sales to you, uh, that in and of itself can be a six-figure business. That's pretty exciting, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So I just want to get a, a little bit of a kind of like a lay of the land here. Who's, who knows of me? Yeah. Yeah. Who has no idea who I am? <laughs> okay, awesome. So uh, I was going to spend about the first 30 minutes of my presentation going through my story and have you guys cry a little bit, um, like, like just about every speaker in the online space goes through. Uh, I'm pretty much going to skip that part and go right into the content. What do you guys say? Awesome. Now, uh, I do have to correct JT on one thing. I got started in the, the home business space in 2005, not 2012, and uh, I got in the network marketing space. And uh, about a year into network marketing, I was pretty much, it was like doing the home meetings, home parties, all that stuff. Uh, it just wasn't my deal, wasn't my jam, especially coming from where I came from, my educational background, uh, embracing technology, and all of a sudden, I go from computer science, MIT, work on top secret space stuff for the government, to hawking vitamins to my friends and family. It just, <laughs> like, something's not, not right here. And uh, that, got, that pushed me into the online space in 2006. And uh, in fact, the company I'm a CMO of, Elite Marketing Pro, used to be called, that same exact community, uh, used to be called Magnetic Sponsoring. Who knows Magnetic Sponsoring? Oh, well, we got a, a few people. Used to be called Magnetic Sponsoring. In 2006, Magnetic Sponsoring is what first introduced me to online marketing, digital marketing. So I started as a student of that system that mentorship program, and now I'm an owner of that program. And so that's how far I've come. And, and you, you don't get to you know, take on that responsibility and be offered that responsibility if you haven't been effective at helping people you know, transform their lives using the skill sets I'm about to share with you. So that's about as much of my story as I'm gonna share with you. I just wanted to give you a little brief overview, especially those of you who are not familiar with, with, with who I am and what I've done and all that stuff. So anyway, that being said, you guys ready? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna be queuing you guys and I need your participation and energy because I am fighting the food coma. I feel it, I feel it. <laughs> I feel your bowels going <laughs> So, <laughs> So you're just one out of way. Me, uh, I know, uh, who can tell me what, what the, the community's mantra here at, at uh, uh, super affiliate network is very similar to this. What is it? Two sales a day. And, sorry. Two sales away. So two sales away. What I'm going to be covering is what happens before, you know, those two sales happen. 
Because if, if you do what the, the part that comes right before those two sales, if you do that effectively and you do it methodically the way I'm going to show you, then the two sales, the reason Misha is saying you're two sales away is because when you reach that point where you start making sales, uh, if you do the first part right, you go into momentum. And, uh, and, th and, and those two sales turns into an ad or an ad campaign that eventually scales. And I'm going to show you some case studies of people that have run, in our community, have run six-figure ads where literally their entire business ballooned out of one single ad because they did the things that I'm about to share with you uh, in a very methodical and specific way in the beginning that gave them the skill sets to be able to take those sales and multiply them into a six-figure business. Is that cool? Yeah. Awesome. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna talk about social media. I know in this community you have a lot of different uh, people teaching a lot of different things on how to get traffic. I'm pretty much gonna focus on one thing here. And if you take nothing, away, nothing else away from a presentation, uh, or if food coma hits you about five minutes from now, uh, know this, that it doesn't matter what you choose to run with, as long as you choose to focus. Choose one thing in the beginning. It does not serve you to be focusing on multiple different traffic strategies, and then trying to build a funnel, and then also having a mini chat funnel, and then and, and like trying to do that, or do, building multiple funnels. Your friend is one. Your friend is the number one. You can only, it is physically impossible for you to focus on multiple things. Sir, I'm looking at you right now, and I can see you clearly, and everybody else is blurry. I can only focus on one person. And as soon as I switch, I can see him in periphery, but he's fuzzy. I can only focus on one thing at a time. Now, you know those other things are happening in the online space, and if at a certain point, strategically, you know, you may want to kind of look over there for a second to see if it's something that can add value or help you get better at what you're currently focusing on, then great. But I'm going to be talking about very one specific strategy, and I'm not saying that, that anything else is wrong. It's just I know for a fact that what I'm about to share with you has been effective for countless students over my 12-year career mentoring online. So social media. Uh, is the great equalizer. I, I believe this is the opportunity uh, that has been the most effective for my students. And, and for this reason, that's where the attention is at. The average person spends 135 minutes per day on social media. And with social media platforms in general, your targeting can be behavior driven. So you can actually uh, have your ads or your message or your post shown to people that have demonstrated certain behaviors. Specifically, as you'll see, certain buying behaviors. The, the social media networks make money by being able to bring uh, their advertisers people that have demonstrated the exact action that, that they want them to make. So behaviors like not just clicking, sharing, and liking, that's cool too, but buying. Social media platforms track buying behaviors including in the online space, including in the affiliate marketing space, including in the network marketing space. So that is one of the most important targeting features of social media platforms in general. Obviously demographics, male, female, location, uh, race even, uh, education, income level. Uh, you can target by interest, what are the things or who are the people they're following. But more specifically, when I'm talking about social media, I'm gonna be, for the rest of this presentation, I'm gonna be singing the praises of Facebook. And it's not because I, I, was, I was paid by Mark Zuckerberg to be here talking about Facebook. Uh, I'm singing the praises of Facebook because that's what currently is working most, more effectively than anything else that's out there. And when I say that more effectively, I'm not saying your YouTube strategy doesn't work or your blogging strategy doesn't work or your Twitter strategy doesn't work. It obviously, those things work as well. But when you look at the entire market, online market, uh, and definitely in our community, what are the majority of marketers in that world using? Well, they're using Facebook. And the reason they're using it is because there's still a massive opportunity. And with Facebook, remember the, the 135 minutes online? Well, 50 minutes of that belongs to Facebook. 
Average person per session or average time per session with Facebook is about 20 minutes. I also notice I'm sourcing these stats. I'm not just going, you know, I've heard that. You know, it's, you, you can look this up. This is, this is verifiable. Uh, and Facebook is critical to 42% of all marketers. So when you think of all marketers, think of like TV, you know, uh, different networks, media buying, uh, radio. That in, in it, you know, it encompasses all those different types of marketers uh, that work for companies or work independently. Well, when you think about it, Facebook has a 42% market share where these, these marketers not only use Facebook and their ad platform, they depend on it. If Facebook goes away, their business is in trouble. And uh, one in five page views online happens on Facebook. So whenever somebody opens a browser, goes to a certain website, well, one in five is actually Facebook. So what makes Facebook the best right now is the targeting. Uh, precise demographics, I already covered that. Here's the behavior-driven part. What do they like, comment, and, you know, what are they liking, commenting, and sharing? So Facebook knows that behavior. They know, they have a profile about you, 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 you. They know what you like and don't like, what you comment, who you follow, don't follow, what type of products you've bought, even if you didn't buy the product through Facebook, you didn't click on an ad, but if your browser's open and you went to a website and made a purchase or thought about buying something, they know. And now that's added to your profile. Facebook's artificial intelligence is scary good. So not only do they, do they now have this data on you, they create profile. This is Skynet type stuff. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so we are not in the Skynet yet days yet. So Facebook has not taken over, but their AI is scary good. In fact, I was actually reading an article that uh, some of the research that Facebook is doing around uh, artificial intelligence. So they have, I guess, in the lab, they have these machines uh, that where they're kind of, they're, it's artificial intelligence. So the, these machines are, are, they're trying to get them to create stuff, get creative. So imagine computers having creativity and thinking of stuff. Well, they noticed, and this is verifiable, this is real. They noticed that they were having communication between machines that have this artificial intelligence technology. These machines not only were communicating with each other and talking to each other on their own, they invented their own language. And the machines started talking to each other in a language that the creators of the machine did not understand. Yeah. And, and, and what did they do next? What do you, what do you think they did next, the, the guys that created the machines? Huh? They, they pulled the plug. <laughs> They actually, they, they turned them off and they're like, well, well what happened? <laughs> so fortunately, we're, we're still in the time where you can pull the plug. <laughs> and, and that's not, you know, that was Facebook's research, you know, branch. It wasn't actually Facebook itself. But their AI is so good that it presents an opportunity for us now. So by, between now and when Skynet takes over and launches the nukes, we have an awesome opportunity to make some money. <laughs> So, so, so now Facebook, it's, it's easy to set up. There's incredible ad platforms out there. YouTube is an ad platform we're utilizing as a company, but there's certain obstacles that, that or there's certain barriers of entry for new people. Um, and so that's not, I don't recommend people start with YouTube as an ad platform, not because it's not fantastic, because it is. It's just, you know, if you're brand new getting started, or if you're, this is your first year, like, who, who here consider themselves a new person to the online space? Okay, who here has been in it for about a year to two years? All right. Some of you who have been here over a year still consider yourselves brand new, and that's okay. And uh, I wanna eliminate those barriers that are keeping you stuck or, or spinning your wheels or not having you move forward. And so uh, that's the reason we start with Facebook, at least in our community. Uh, it's easy to set up. You can set up an account. You can launch an ad with uh, some text, an image, and a place to send them. And that place to send them doesn't even have to be a website. 
you can send them into a messenger conversation. Do it old school. You know, talk to people. And then send them a link somewhere else. You know, if you don't have a website, but you have an affiliate program, it could be as simple as that. Uh, you can track, test, test, and you can scale. So once you have those two, those two sales that you make, when, when Misha says you are two sales away, those two sales, well, Facebook gives you the ability to scale that so that it turns into four, five, six, seven, et cetera. Uh, it's also inexpensive. There's people that, uh, that might complain about, ah, oh, I've wasted all this money on Facebook and all this stuff. But when you put it in the, in the context of business in general, what it takes to launch a real business, what it takes to advertise a, like a real brick and mortar business, the cost to do business on Facebook is so small, relatively speaking. The only people that are complaining about the cost of advertising on Facebook are the people that lack that business perspective. And so you can start for as little as $5 a day. $5 a day, don't go to Starbucks or, or, or limit your Starbucks intake and there's your ad budget. Uh, recycle, <laughs> go recycle. Take some cans to the recycle center. There's your ad budget. Uh, I'm serious. I, I still recycle. I still do that. Uh, I, like, my mom, even, even now where I pay all my mom's bills, she still insists on recycling. And so when I go to her house in the backyard, there's like mountains of cans and bottles. And we load up my brother's truck. And I go to the recycle center. And I'm like loading all this like yucky stuff. I'm like seven figure earner in my ass, you know? She's like, <laughs> like I'm helping my mom recycle because this is, this is her money. She like, I help her do that, and now she has 60 extra bucks in her pocket. Well, you can do that, and you have 60 extra bucks to invest in your business. So, uh, and also with Facebook, quick, quick results, low risk. So it's great for testing offers. If it works here, it can work elsewhere. Uh, it's also a gateway to Instagram, so if you eventually want to move into Instagram, Guess what? Facebook owns Instagram. It's the exact same ad platform. And, so, and it could also you know, work on other platforms. Bottom line, uh, as of now, it might not be five years from now. It might not be seven years from now. Uh, I, don't, I didn't swallow the Facebook Kool-Aid. If Facebook ceases to work, I'll let you know. But right now, it's the fastest, easiest, and most profitable way to start advertising and scale a business. And the proof is verifiable in all the marketers that are online whose businesses depend on Facebook. Uh, warning, you are gonna need training, mentorship, and testing as part of this process. Just because I'm saying it's the best place to start for, for, for most people, doesn't mean it's gonna be easy, and doesn't mean it's gonna be a get-rich-quick opportunity. So there are two important factors you gotta keep in mind. You're here, uh, how many of you are promoting uh, SAN offers or want to promote SAN offers? Awesome. So you got to get clear based on those offers on who you want to target, who will be a best fit for that offer. And, uh, and then also, what is your value proposition? Like, what is it that, that they need to help them move forward based on their pains and struggles? In fact, I'll talk, I'll talk about the pain. The who are the problems and struggles. So the who is just not a person, it is a person, but also what are their problems in their life? Like um, a mentor told me, uh, shared with me recently, based on scientific research, millions of dollars uh, invested by the Canadian government, uh, one of the conclusions that they, they came up with after all this research on human behavior is they basically were able to define what creates happiness in human beings. You guys interested in knowing? So what, what makes people happy? Money. <laughs> well, close. Fulfillment, freedom. What, what is that a result of? Very close. So, I'll give you the answer. I won't draw it out. Uh, so, the source of happiness, what creates and elicits happiness in human beings, is actually our ability to solve problems. When we are able to solve problems in our life, 
we tend to be happier. So you can't be happy without the ability to solve problems. And if you're somebody that's unhappy, there's probably a lot of problems in your life going on. As marketers, we are in the business of solving people's problems, therefore, we are actually in the happiness business. So, because people are, the remember, the pursuit of happiness, it's part of the founding of, the, of this nation. We have an opportunity to pursue happiness. Well, how do we pursue happiness? We have to solve our problems. And as marketers, based on what you're offering, what you're offering solves very specific problems. So what are those problems? That's the who. What type of struggles are they dealing with? How is it impacting their life? Also, if they solve those problems, what, what do they have an opportunity to do? What desires can be fulfilled? What might their life look like if they solve these problems? So you gotta address that as well in your marketing. Where do they spend their time? So these people that have these problems, or tend to have these problems, where do they hang out? Who do they follow? Who do they buy from? This is, this is the key one. This is where it gets exciting. Who do they buy from? So your offer, so I just talked about the who, which is pretty much about problems and what they want. The offer is what is your solution? What, is, what problems does it solve? What's different or unique about how it solves those problems? Like what makes it stand out, be different? And if the product that you're offering it, 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 where it's not obvious, that's where you come in as a marketer to try to figure out how is this different and how could I convey this to a market that's been offered a lot of different solutions to that same problem. And what desirable outcomes does that solution produce? So I'm actually going to go through this stuff very fast because I see some of you fading already going. So, some of the food come is fading, fading you. Uh, but I'm going to go through this pretty fast. Uh, I just want you to get the general idea, and I also, I'm going to give you the slides, if that's cool. Yeah. Because some of you are going through food coma, other, others are like, <laughs> slow down for me. Uh, so I'll just give you the slides, and you, whatever's not in the slides, obviously you can write down. So I'll give you the slides, and I'll give you some other stuff as well at the end. So let's dive a little deeper. So targeting on Facebook. I, already, I talked a little about targeting, but this is specifically what you can do. Location, gender, interests, behaviors, connections, custom audience, and lookalike audience. This is where it gets really cool. I put these in bold because when you are at the point where you're making those two sales, the two sales away, uh, very likely if you're on Facebook, you're making those two sales when you're utilizing those two targeting options to their fullest. And that, but I have to get you there. And so uh, in the last 20 minutes of this presentation, I'm actually going to walk you through what that 90-day roadmap looks like. So 90, in 90 days, I'm going to show you how to get to the, utilizing those features inside of Facebook so you can start pumping out those sales. But I got to get you there. So that's what this whole thing is about. So uh, easy way to get started. So start off by targeting competitor audiences or other leaders uh, or other companies uh, that are offering similar things to what you have. I love targeting audiences of gurus. So Facebook already has audiences that are already like pre-made for you based on like Robert Kiyosaki, John Maxwell, you know, you name it. Uh, and so for your specific niche, for the market you're going after, there's gurus in that audience that you can you know, plug in as a, as, a, as a target, at least to their audiences. So in your target market, those people that are following those gurus are already seeking and buying third-party solutions. So those are buyers, those are people that are conditioned to wanna you know, purchase and find solutions to their problems uh, that are third-party. And guess what? You're a, you're a third-party. Therefore, it's easier to, to convert those people than it is to convert somebody who are not even aware uh, of anything that can possibly help their, you know, solve their problem. Somebody who's aware of a problem versus somebody already having found some solutions to their problem, you want the people that have already like, invested in solutions to their problem, not just bitching about their problem. Does that make sense? 
Now, the people that bitch about their problem, they might be buyers too, but the other ones are gonna convert better. They're lower hanging fruit. So they're conditioned to buy and attend events as well, it's especially in, in the online space, there's a lot of events that go on. And in the network marketing space, there's a lot of events that go on. They're already conditioned to buy events or attend events. Uh, competitor audiences, so I talked about guru audiences, competitor audiences are great too for the exact same reasons. So that's where you start in terms of targeting. It's the low-hanging fruit. Uh, some basic ad types on Facebook. I want to share with you the ad types we've ran and have been most effective. 90% of our more effective ads for us are an image ad to a blog post and then to some sort of lead magnet. Who doesn't know what a lead magnet is? So it's just, it's a gift. It's a free, something for free. The blog post is the content. You're warming them up. So the ad piques their interest. The blog post warms them up, provides them some information that, that gives them a little insight and value. And then the lead magnet gives them even more. But now, hey, enough freebies. You got to cough up your information to get it. So that's the idea. So uh, you could also just go from an image ad to a capture page. So you skip the value part of it, or maybe you have the value part of it as part of the ad. So you have a lot of freedom uh, in the ad, as you'll see, where you can write a bunch of stuff and write an essay if you want in the ad. And then maybe they got the value from there. Or maybe you want to do a video ad where the content, that you're, the value that you're delivering to them is in the video. And in this case, it's the video ad, you give them some content. The blog post, you give them some content, and then you offer them something of even more value in exchange for their information. However, with this video, you want to make sure that it's two minutes max. Keep it short, because they're already going to have to read a blog post or some piece of content. And then, uh, or you can just do video ad to a lead magnet, to a capture page, where you give them some value in the video, you promote that video on Facebook, and then eventually you, you go, for more information or for additional training, go here. And then at that point, they got to give up their information in exchange for, for that piece of content or value or ebook or extra video or whatever, or a webinar. Now, I don't want you guys to do all of these. Uh, if you're getting started with Facebook or if you've tried Facebook and haven't had success, what's been most effective for us and for our members is just focusing on number one. So for beginners, image ad to a blog post. It's the simplest place to start, for, and, but also it, there's a few advantages here. You're leading with value. You're leading with uh, information that is helpful for them to realize, hey, this person knows what they're talking about with regards to solving my problem. Or maybe you actually solved a few of their problems on the blog post, but if you want to solve their problem holistically, that's where they have to you know, opt into your funnel but you led with value, and Facebook likes that. And it, and it results in people being happy on Facebook when you lead with value. So it's low risk a, as a result. So when it comes to compliance and, and Facebook approving your ads or getting your, your ad account shut down, well, this is the lowest risk approach because you're leading with content. And Facebook, basically, it's a content curation system. So you're, it's low risk, uh, and it produces warmer leads, more qualified leads. Hey, if they're willing to click on an ad, read a blog post, and the blog post doesn't have to be super long. It could be like a 1,000 words tops. Um, they read a blog post, and they go, wow, this is really interesting. I want more information. Well, when they become a lead, they're much more qualified. They're much more qualified, more likely to buy, because they already went through a few steps, and they actually committed themselves to a few minutes of reading. And, and uh, who's thinking right now, well, who has time for that? Who's going to actually read my blog post and go through all that uh, to opt into my funnel? Who's going to have, have that mind in their, the, the thought in their mind right now? That's OK. This is where the Facebook AI comes in. You know, the Skynet thing? Uh, well, the Facebook AI is able to find the people that are most likely to take that action. They're gonna find the readers. So if, if your funnel consists of them going through content, well, Facebook's gonna find more people that have demonstrated a willingness to go through content to get access to information. So it's sorting them for you. 
It's pretty powerful. So not, like I said, 90% of our best ads, six-figure ads in and of themselves, have been image ad to a blog post, keeping it simple. And also there's, a, there's fewer mistakes that you make when that happens. So your basic ad objective here, so there's a few types of ads here with Facebook. There's three ads. In the past, these were just labels, but now Facebook has gotten so good that, that Facebook actually means what it says. So it means what it says with regards to a traffic ad is a traffic ad, an engagement ad is an engagement ad, and a conversion ad is a conversion ad. Here's what I mean. With an engagement ad, also called a boosted post, Facebook, you're, you're saying, I want more people to engage with my post. So Facebook, I'm going to give you five bucks and find people that are going to comment, like, and share my stuff. So it's not going to find people that are going to click to your website and opt into your funnel and buy your stuff. It's going to optimize, it's going to profile people, use its AI profile people to find people yeah, right that are more likely to take the action that, that, that you're so optimizing for, which is engagement. You guys have control over, yeah. you're going to turn it on or something. I, I hear, <laughs> hey, JT, I can hear you. <laughs> uh, a traffic ad is exactly that. It finds the clickers. Facebook has a repository of people that are, no, that are predisposed to clicking. Maybe they're not engagers, maybe they're not buyers, but they like to click. So f traffic ad will find the clickers. And so there's some value to this. And in the past, people were just able to run these type of ads to a, a funnel with an affiliate link and make all types of money. But that doesn't work anymore. And the reason it doesn't work anymore it's because actually Facebook was true to their word and said, this is a traffic ad and that's what it does. This is an engagement ad and that's what it does. Fortunately for us, there's another type of ad called a conversion ad. And the conversion ad is an ad where Facebook is optimizing for the conversion that you want. So if you say, Facebook, I want leads, then Facebook finds people that have shown a history or predisposition to taking that action that you want, which is opt in to your funnel. Or you go, Facebook, I want buyers. So Facebook optimizes for that action. It'll find people that fit the profile of the people that have already bought from you. Does that sound pretty cool? Is that, is that kind of interesting or am I, am I putting you guys to sleep? Because it's less work for you guys in the past this type of sorting we had to do as marketers. Now Facebook is doing that. I'm, and I'm gonna, later I'm going to talk to you about somebody who was able to use this conversion ad in an incredible way where they didn't have an audience. They just targeted everybody and it worked. That's how powerful this is. So now for a conversion ad, you need your own funnel. So you want to, so the training you're getting here at San as it relates to building your funnel, you need that. And so the type of funnel that I'm recommending is this. Uh, a blog, uh, so an ad to a blog post. And the blog post doesn't go to a capture page. The blog, the, you just have like a pop-up that kind of hovers over the blog post. So they click a link, and then all of a sudden just a window pops up within the blog. And then, you, then they can opt in. And then they you know, opt into a list, and they're, they're sent to an offer. And then if, if they buy, great. If they don't, well, they didn't, they didn't. But at least they're on your list. So there's a few metrics here. And I'm not going to cover this stuff because you guys are going to go, oh, metrics. <laughs> uh. But uh, these are the metrics that you're kind of watching. Ad spend, impressions, link clicks. But specifically, there's a few key metrics. And you don't need to learn how to calculate this because Facebook already gives it to you. But it's very easy to calculate. A click-through rate and cost per click. Click-through rate is what percentage of people that see the ad click on the ad. That's it. Cost per click is how much is each click costing you. Pretty simple. Uh, and then there's other things you're tracking here. Once people uh, reach the blog and are, ready, are kind of being offered the opportunity to opt in, and you have your lead conversion rate, which is how many of the people that visited my landing page opted in, and the cost per lead. On average, how, how much is each lead costing me? So those are the metrics you want to track. So the anatomy of, of, a, of an ad is this. You have an image or a video in the middle. That's number one. A headline in the bottom, number two. Text copy on the top, number three. 
CTA or call to action, meaning tell them what to do next, uh, on the bottom right, number four, and description number five. And there's also the social engagement at the bottom. The social engagement is, offers some social proof that, hey, people like this stuff, and might, he might not be a bozo and actually know what he's talking about. So that's what an ad looks like. I want to zero you in on just one part of this, of this ad. And I, I, I used to believe that the image was the most important part of any ad, and it still plays a crucial role. But where the magic really happens, actually, who can guess? Where does the magic really happen? Engagement? Anybody else? Headline. Anybody else? What? Call to action. So I respectfully disagree with all of you. Because uh, what's been most effective for me in terms of, of testing and, and really enrolling my audience has been the text copy. Because it's at the top. It's what people see first. And, and when I pay attention to that part, everything else is pretty easy. Now, the other factors are still important, but the text copy for me has been more important than anything. So traditional text copy goes like this. It's told in the form of a story. So Facebook, the mistake a lot of marketers try to make, and they can still be effective doing this, but it's not as effective, is they kind of just lecture to people. It's like, hey, if you're having this problem, no, pro you know, no worries. I have a solution for you. If you're suffering from this or suffering from this or dealing with this, uh, you can stop now because I have a solution for you. Click here to learn more. They're just kind of telling at people. They're, telling, they're lecturing. They're, they're commanding them. And with other platforms, that might be cool with Facebook, they don't like it. Because it's, what is Facebook primarily? What, what is Facebook? Social network. And what do people on social networks tend to do? Socialize. And one of the things that people, one one, what's one of the uh, ways that people socialize and communicate with each other? Story. How they feel. Exactly. That's exactly right. So this is how your, the story traditionally uh, has gone on Facebook and how it's been effective is a story of struggle. So you start, the first part of it leads with a problem. You convey, call out a problem. And then, and then the agitate part, agi the marketers call it agitate, like you're kind of turning the knife. But really what this is, is how does the problem impact their life? Or in, in the story, you're telling the, the story from your perspective. It's first person. So what problem did you deal with how did that impact your life? What did your life look like when you dealt with this problem? That's the story of struggle part. And then you have the story of triumph. I found it, but then I found a solution. I discovered a solution, or I tripped over a solution, or whatever that is. And now my, my life looks like this. So you describe how that solution uh, impacted your life, or how it, you, you're, what you're trying to convey is how it can impact their life, but you're telling it in first person. This is what my life looks like now as a result of it. And then you have a call to action. So those, that's the structure of a very effective ad. It's a traditional text copy structure. This works for all copy, email marketing, sales letters, video. If you go through this structure in, your, in all your content, you'll be very effective. So start with a story of struggle, triumph, Call to action. And there's a case study, Brandy Shaver, she used this formula in her text copy above. She, got, she generated 81,000 visitors, 11,000 leads, uh, generated 890 uh, customers. So she started with us, starting from zero, barely knew how to check her email, she didn't have a Facebook account. And then she, you know, within a year was able to do this. Uh, Total, she spent on Facebook $71,321. Who is freaked out by that number? Going, shit. Well, I'm not spending that. Fuck, no way. But do you think she started by plopping down 70 grand? So it's like, so it's like your, your, your fear is kind of contradicting the logic that's going on, but the fear is dominating. She started with probably $10 a day on this. And then as she saw it working, as she saw the return, for every dollar I spend, I get $2 back. Well, I'm going to keep doing this forever. 
And eventually, she got it up where she was spending $300 a day on advertising. But guess what? She's getting $600 back. You see how that works? She ramps up. It doesn't start there. Uh, her commissions, affiliate commissions, were uh, over six figures. One ad. This one ad. This was her first successful ad. And she's been able to repeat it. And this is, that's the structure. So the structure is this. Story of struggle. I was so sick of prospecting friends. And, uh, this is the network marketing space, by the way. I was so sick of prospecting friends and family, home meetings, blah, blah, blah. I found a way to build that actually turned my network marketing business into a home business. Now she's going into, I found a solution. So now the story of triumph. So first line, story of struggle. Second line, story of tri uh, triumph. I found a solution and it changed my life. Uh, my upline thought I was crazy until my business started to explode. Click to learn more. So you see the structure? It's struggle, found a solution, story of triumph. And that's it, and then call to action. Very simple. Uh, this is another case, this is, this is uh, uh, Witt and Carrie Hyam, and, and they're Carrie and Brandy, they know each other, they're friends. Um, link clicks, 18,000, over 4,000 leads, over 400 customers, total ad spend. So she spent on Facebook, starting with a small budget, and then as she saw the return, she's like, increase budget, increase budget. Uh, total ad spend of 19,000. This was the, over the course of almost a year. And her return was 67,000 from one ad. That's a crazy return, right? Over $3 back per, for every dollar she spends. And this is her copy. I've never been one for home parties, home meetings, blah, blah, blah. Okay, story of struggle. In fact, I was completely burned out. Never any game, still the story of struggle. And then, but when I changed my focus, so now I discovered something, I changed my focus and talked about, and talked about the things in this blog post, I actually started to enjoy prospecting and the quality of people enrolling in my business is much greater. Story of triumph. What her life looks like now. Struggle, I found a solution. Triumph, call to action. Can you guys tell a story that kind of fits this structure? Do you guys you think you could do that? Raise your hand if you think you can do that. Yeah, you guys do it every day. You guys do it every day. You just got to put it on paper or on computer, sorry. Um, <laughs> so here's another one that she did. I'll go through these metrics really fast because I'm running out of time. Total leads, $3,600, $238. So she's running this ad at the same time as she's running the other ad I just showed you. Ad spend, $17,000. Commission, $75,000. So between these two ads, she had a six-figure income. In fact, that year they did uh, in their business total. Because here's the key thing. What do you think matters most here? What number matters the most here, do you think? Tell me real quick. New customers? Commissions. Oh, you like the commissions. So the commissions are nice, but you guys are right. There's two numbers here that are critical. She built a list of 3,600 leads with one ad and has a list of 238 buyers. That's where the gold is. So even though between these two ads it was about $150,000 income, that year she and her husband did over $400,000 in income because then that list was monetized with other offers. She got them into her network marketing business and other things she was working on. You see how it works? Even if she breaks even, it's a win. So, same thing. Tired of bugging friends and family, we were tired, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to take my network marketing business online. Uh, I actually built from home, but we didn't want to spam our friends and family, so still the story struggle. So the first two paragraphs are a story of struggle, and then the last part is I found a solution, my life is awesome, click to learn more. Very simple. Again, you'll get these slides. So there's a, another structure that's starting to come up. So this structure that I just walked you through is kind of getting a little, little tired. And so there's another structure that is even more powerful now. It's, it still contains what I just taught you, but it, it leads with something else. It leads with a bold claim. So share an extraordinary result or possibility. And, demonst and, and say that, that that extraordinary result can be achieved without the painful things that you're used to doing. 
and you want to address their skepticism because if you're if you're sharing a, a bold, you're making a bold claim, you got to actually just address the skepticism, and then everything else is the same. So this is what it looks like. Uh, case study: Bexadec. This is currently an ad that's running right now. Uh, she's generated 6,400 leads from this one ad, 228 uh, customers, 13,000 so far in ad spend. But she's made 24,000 in commissions. In her MLM, she, last month she had her first $8,000 a month. And with other offers, she's also does some coaching, so she's made about 4,000 uh, from, from those other offers. So in total, she's getting about a three to one return on this investment. Prior to this, Beck was, uh, had pretty much got very nominal, very little results for 10 months. But she kept at it, she kept at it, she kept at it. And all of a sudden, she launches this ad and psh, takes off. She has probably 7,000, under, just under 7,000 leads total on her list. This one ad is the majority of her business. She's now doing about 20,000 a month total. Now, income disclaimers, we're not promising anything, all that stuff. Um, but these are real results, these are real case studies. But guess what, she went through 10 months of trying to, of figuring it out before she got there. And so, so who would trade 10 months of study, skill building, and mentorship to, to get to the point where you have an ad like that that changes your life? Who would trade 10 months? So some people in this market are looking for get rich quick. Some people are looking, hey, if I don't make money in 30 days, I'm out of here. Screw you guys. You guys are scammers. That is unrealistic. So here with Beck, last month I recruited 90 new people without posting one annoying selfie. So both claim without something painful, but you might be thinking I'm full of it, blah, 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 so now she's addressing the skeptics. Uh, and then, and then uh, I'm spending my days innocently posting about my amazing shakes. You know, so she's basically criticizing people that are spamming their, their news feed. So she talks about her story of struggle and says she used to do that. And then she found a solution. I'm not going to read the entire thing because I'm running short. So um, I just wanted to throw in a towel, but then I found something. And I found a different social media strategy, and my, compl my results completely changed. Now, the story of triumph is kind of small at the end. Uh, why do you think that is? Uh, maybe. But I think because she already shared the story of triumph in the beginning. So she already shared the results, so she doesn't need to go deep at the end. But it's still, she still has to address it, so it still follows a similar structure. But the bold claim kind of supports the story of triumph. She just led with that. So this ad structure is, works great now. Really freaking awesome. And then you have your call to action. So I, am, I might not have time to go through all of this, but I actually recorded a video for you guys. So who here now feels that now that I showed you how to write an effective ad, that you know exactly what to do over the next three months to six months to generate a six-figure ad? Liars. Because <laughs> remember what I said, you need a, you need a funnel too. You, you need to drive to a funnel. And, and uh, if I asked you to write out your map, what, write out what it is you're going to do day in, day out over the next 90 days, six months, a year, um, I suspect that you'd have trouble. You have a really good idea. You've, you've just learned the fundamentals of one skill set that you need. But in order to create a six-figure income, you actually need a, a, a set of skills, not just one. I just taught you one. So this marketing plan that I'm about to kind of rush through, I've recorded for you, and I'm going to give you that recording so you can go through it. Um, but it works, and it's going to tee you up perfectly so that what, by the time you're done with this 90-day plan, at the 90 days, if you've been diligent, hardworking, and you've gotten mentorship, you should be at the point where you should start popping those two sales. And those two sales multiply. So I'm trying to get you to the point where you're two sales. And if you do that, what results naturally, if you've learned the skill sets properly, is a pretty significant victory with regards to advertising. So here's how it goes. The first 
Two weeks, you're just setting up. Business manager account, ad account, all that stuff. Most important here thing, uh, most important thing here is you find a mentor. You're gonna need a marketing mentor, and if you're technically challenged, you need a technical mentor. That's it, you just need it. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna spin your wheels trying to figure out a bunch of technical stuff that's not gonna really matter. Your objectives here will be to get set up and get 100 likes, that's it. This legitimizes you with Facebook. Get 100 followers on your fan page. They can be your friends and family, it doesn't matter. If you, want, you can do it with advertising, or you can do it through your, through your circle of influence or your friends, hey, go like my page, just get to 100, that primes you for the next step. Phase one, and that little symbol is, an, is I'm kind of geeking out, it's the symbol for phase in engineering. So I'm just geeking out over there. Um, it's a, so this is the skill you're learning in phase one, two to four weeks is ad copy. Everything I taught you here just now, well, guess what? You're going to get the slides. You're going to be able to go through it on your own time, and you'll be able to uh, go through it on your own. But here, you're just learning ad copy. You're running traffic ads, engagement ads, to a blog post. You can even run these ads to a messenger conversation. It doesn't matter. Uh, you're just trying to run the ad, and you're trying to see how effective you're going to be with your ad copy, and you want to get your stuff reviewed by a mentor, and you also want to be doing Facebook Lives uh, so you practice that skill moving forward. The objectives here is to get used to running your Facebook ads, uh, make working with the ads manager, the ad platform, as easy as you make serial. Get familiar with it. That's all you're trying to do within these first couple weeks. And then you also want to focus on, on three metrics. So you know your ad is effective when you've hit on these three metrics in this way. Your CTR is 2% or greater, cost per click, is 50 cents or less, and relevancy is eight or higher. If your ad does this, that means you're, you've gotten pretty good at writing copy for your ad. Doesn't matter if you don't make sales or leads, doesn't matter, you're not trying to do that at this point. Doesn't matter, you might get lucky, but you probably won't. But these are indicators that you actually have gotten pretty good at ad copy, and you're still doing Facebook Lives. Phase two is run traffic or engagement ads. You're still doing what you did before, uh, you're still doing Facebook Lives, but now you're beginning the build out of your funnel. So first you practice the ad, you got good at that. Once you hit those metrics, save that ad. Now you build out the funnel, or you continue running that ad and maybe create some new ads, but your primary objective here is to build your funnel and work with a tech coach to build that funnel. You're gonna need mentorship. Objectives is to get your, ad, your, your ads running, or get used to running your ads still, Make marketing as, or ads manager as easy as serial. You focus on those metrics once again. But the new thing here in this phase, the thing you're adding, is that you're, you're starting and completing your funnel. And if you've done that, if you, when you finish your funnel, you graduate to phase three. And this is what, a fun, what the funnel looks like. Uh, I'll give you guys the, the, the slides for this. So this is what, it's a very, very simple funnel. Nothing fancy about what, she, what Beck did with her funnel. Phase three is now you're optimizing for lead conversion. This is the skill you're learning now. You're now launching ads to your new funnel that you just built. You're optimizing for landing page views, and in the video I explained this part, but basically you're running ads to your funnel. Uh, after 25 leads, you switch to a conversion ad, and you still get mentorship. And you're still doing Facebook Lives. Objectives is start converting leads and hit 100 leads in the US. So you're not even focused here on sales. Notice I'm not even telling you about the sales yet. You're in phase three, and I'm saying it doesn't matter that you're not making sales. Because if you're able to get 100 leads, that means you've mastered what? What? But if you're able to get 100 leads, what have you at least gotten competent in? It's written right there. Lead conversion, yes. The final phase, phase four, is you're still getting your ads reviewed, you're still doing Facebook Lives, but now you're creating a custom audience of your leads, and you're going to Facebook. This is, this is the most important part of my entire presentation. You're taking your leads and going, Facebook, find me more people like these. Use your big Skynet AI and find me more people like these. Facebook will produce an audience of a few million people that match that profile of the people that are your leads. 
Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right. So then you're optimizing for conversions at this point. Your objectives, the skill you're, you're working on is conversions. Your objective is now to get sales. Because now Facebook has given you an audience that it's a, Skynet AI has found and says, here, here, Fernie, here are, your, here are your list of buyers. Go get them. That's what's happening. And your goal is to keep the cost per buyer under $100. So if you're generating a new customer for less than $100, you're in good shape. You want to eventually get that lower, but that's a good starting point. I rushed through that, didn't I? Woo, that was fast. If you guys want to be able to have a download of these slides and also a video where I walk you through that 90-day roadmap a little slower, uh, you can go here, ferniesabados.com slash 90-day. Guys, I just walked you through a 90-day plan. It took Beck Sedeck 10 months to get to that point where she launched her six-figure ad because she didn't have this. I literally came up with this a month ago, less than a month ago. This, this map, or this kind of uh, four-phase uh, roadmap for you, I came up with it just a month ago. After 12 years of doing mentoring and coaching, I finally came up with something that actually tells people what to do at a certain point in their journey. And so after the 90 days, some magic starts happening. Thank you guys, really appreciate it. Yeah.